Hi, Julie here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a rotating carousel paper bead drying rack. And basically I'm using the same base as I did before with my other carousel drying rack and the, a, a PVC pipe of the same type as the other carousel paper bead drying rack. But instead of having dowels in the top with holes drilled in and the dowels stuck in, um, which were very fragile, I decided I wanted something stronger and beefier, so I made this one that has five and a half inch carriage bolts with, and they're quarter inch thick, and these nuts here are quarter inch nuts. They're basically, they are made to fit on these. And then this has a three inch see, uh, white PVC ca uh, end cap and a drawer pull and uh, that's basically what it has. There's washers on the inside and I'll show you how to make this whole thing and uh, it does rotate. You do need to loosen the knob at the top to make it rotate. Uh, basically what you do is uh, when you're dipping your beads you can just go like this um, to put it away but you pull it out. You pull it up and out and then push it in and dip your beads and string uh, on your string and just hang them on each of these arms. When I made little teeny tiny beads like quarter inch, I was able to put eight strands on each arm comfortably. Um, right now this one is five, but I could have put more on there. Right now these are not wet, they're not dripping or anything, this is just for the video. Uh, but basically that's it. You can put up to 64 strands of beads on this, which could be quite a bit. And, uh, well, let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do to get started is we need to mark this so that we can actually make our eight cuts around. <clears throat> and so just basically get a regular old piece of paper and you're going to draw a circle just like that and then what you're going to do is you're going to cut that circle out with a pair of scissors okay so I've got my scissors and this is what we're going to do and you want to cut it out so it's on the inside of the black line And then what you're going to do with this circle is you're going to fold it in half. And in just a moment I'll show you that as soon as I get this finished, get and cut this out. Okay. And then you're going to fold this paper in half. And you're going to fold it in half again so that you have it in quarters. And then you're going to fold this in half one more time because you're going to want to put eight arms on your drying rack. Okay, so to mark the center of this, what you're going to do is you're going to cut off that tip. That marks the center. Okay, and then what you're going to do is all of these folds represent a point that you're going to mark on here. So you're going to cut off those tips. Okay, and that should be that. What you're going to do is going to open this up. And you'll have your eight points and your center, and you're going to line it up and you're going to want to use a black sharpie for this and but I have uh, my little black pen here so let's see how that works okay we're going to need a sharpie okay so I got a, a black sharpie and what we're going to do is we're going to mark all of the points I'm going to line it up as perfectly as you can and start marking your dots and basically what you're doing is marking 
where you're going to make your cuts. And this should make it as even as possible. Okay, so when that's done, you've got your eight points around. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to end up cutting grooves wherever these dots are um, marked and we're going to drill a hole in the center here. This was my practice cap for the idea that I wanted to do. This peanut butter jar lid ended up being too flexible. So, but I did practice with this and we're going to need to practice with the high speed Dremel type tool using this bit. It is a 561 Dremel multi-purpose bit and you can cut sideways with this and that's why I'm going to be using it. Okay. Okay, so far I've got two of the holes um, cut out and they actually do fit this bolt pretty well. You're going to put the bolt up like this and that's how it's going to sit. And in order to get the rest of the holes to be accurate, I've put this painter's tape down along the edge. I did two of them to try to get them lined up perfectly the same. And so basically what I'll do is I'll follow the dots across, around and uh, grind it out until I have all eight of them done. And the I've, I'll be eyeballing the, the inside around. Um, I could measure and see where that falls, maybe by using this little piece of paper that I started off with. I can go ahead and put this in the center about where and then make my mark on this piece of paper here and go like this and go to the other side and mark it here and then cut that out. And believe it or not, it doesn't have to be super, super precise, um, but it does need to be close. And I'm going to go ahead and cut my little divots in here again for ease in marking. Okay, and if I had my black magic marker, basically what I would be doing is laying this down on my circle and line the little... Um, grooves here that I've already cut with my my cut marks and I basically want to make sure that this lines up correctly and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my hole centered over this hole and I'm going to turn it and there we go and basically what I'm going to do is where these fall around hopefully they'll be equidistant try to center it as best you can and mark the edges of where the top part has to fall. And then you're just going to grind out the slot according to where these lines are and they're going to line up down here too. And hopefully this will work out fine. And so I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of them, and we'll try it out. Okay, so I'm actually done putting, to drilling, or grinding all the grooves into my cap here. And this is what I actually had before. It was a peanut butter jar cap, and this one was not very um, strong. It was too flexible. So I decided I wanted one that was made out of a PVC cap, and this is about, um, it's a three inch cap, and you can get this in any good hardware store. And uh, this cost me about $4.52, give or take a few change actually. And uh, so that I wanted to make sure that I practiced on another piece of this white PVC uh, before I actually started grinding on this one. This one is now complete, so I'm going to go ahead and take off the tape. And I'm going to show you how to assemble your um, advanced or stronger pe carousel paper bead drying rack. 
Okay, and this is what you're actually going to need to go ahead and assemble it. You're going to need, of course, your center hub, and you're going to need a um, small one inch, or actually it's three quarters inch size CPVC cap that I drilled a 964 inch hole into for this particular bolt. And I'm going to go ahead and finish screwing that in there a little bit more because it's not quite tight enough. And uh, it needs to go all the way in because this bolt is the specific size needed for this particular hub with the arrangement that I have. Okay, it's going to take me just a moment here. Almost there. Okay, that's as far as it's going to go. Okay, then the next step you're going to need are some washers. You have a big one here that's one inch in diameter with a, it's about a 7 16 inch center hole in it. And then you have another one inch washer that's a little bit thinner with a quarter inch hole in the center. This one's a little bit thicker and this one's a little bit thinner. The project sheet will actually have the actual dimensions. And then I'm going to need one more little tiny washer. This one's really small. And this one's one millimeter thick. And the inside just fits over this screw. And the outside fits just inside of here. So the first thing you're going to do is put this washer here. And you want to put this big one next with the big hole around it. And then you want to put this one on top of that. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Okay, and then what else you're going to need is this. This is a flange weld nut. And this one's got a quarter inch wide or diameter shank. It is three quarters of an inch in diameter overall. And the overall length is three eighths of an inch. And the threads in here, uh, you can ignore those. This just actually will slide over the top. And what this does, it's going to create a bearing so that your hub will spin freely on this thing. And um, basically, let me sh show you how this is going to work. It's actually going to go down inside your washers. And it, it's going to sit on top of that tiny one and you're going to have this space where the thickness of this hub will actually be able to spin in it. So this is the way to actually put it together. You want to put the hub over the screws and then you want to put this center piece or the flange weld nut down inside. And you're going to need to fiddle with it until it's all down in there and it's, it's actually there already. So I'm going to go ahead and put my drawer, not, drawer pull. You're going to need one that has about a three quarter inch deep hole in the inside from the, t the edge here down into the bottom of the hole. And then you want to go ahead and screw that down. It might take a minute. Okay, and tighten that as good as you can. And if everything was done correctly, you might have to uh, tighten that even a little bit more. Okay. And the last time I did this, it spun freely. And for some reason, it's not working again this time. Okay, basically, this is, this is it. You just want to loosen it up a little bit so that it will spin freely like this. And apparently it's going to tighten up a, a little bit on you sometimes, which might be a good thing. You can make it stationary. If you want to loosen it, you just loosen the, hub, the, the knob at the top. And that's basically it for the top. And once you get it on top of your pipe, uh, then you can go ahead and put in your bolts. But let me demonstrate how you do the bolts here. Okay, what you do is you take your five and a half inch long bolts, you're going to need eight of those, and you're going to need cap nuts. And the, the bolts go in like this, and if you look on the inside, they're gonna, you're going to push it in, 
and it's going to rest on the center cap here and you're going to put your cap nut on the end like this and you're going to do that all the way around and uh, so when you're it's in storage you just go ahead and lift it up and let it let it fall so that way when it's being stored all of your bolts are around the hub hanging down and that way it can store in a corner or somewhere on a shelf and you can also go ahead and tighten this up if you need to and so um, in a moment I will show you the completed project okay now I'm in my craft room and I'm going to put together this new carousel paper bead drying rack that actually rotates and this is what you do okay go ahead and put on the center hub just like this push it down and then you're just going to go ahead and start putting in the um, bolts here and since I want it to rotate I'm going to loosen my drawer knob a little bit so I can rotate it while putting these on. All right, let's get to number five on here. Loose a little bit, little bit more. to go after this one. Loosen it some more. All right, flying that. <laughs> okay, let's put that one on there. And I'm gonna loosen that a little bit more and it will spin this way, no problem. Okay. And then just to use it, basically what you do is you pull it out and push it in like I had mentioned before. So that way it'll be straight. And basically that's all you do. You you pull out the ones that you need when you need them. And, uh, and if it starts to wobble on you, just tighten it back down. And that's basically it. And uh, let's go ahead and pull these all out, tighten it down, and go get some strands of beads to go ahead and string on it. I've got a bunch here that are prepared ahead of time. And if I were, I'm not going to bother dipping them right now because you've seen me dip beads before, but basically these have been strung on my 50 pound fishing line and uh, they have a mini pony bead and a little e bead a crimp bead and two large loops at each end and that is so that you can invert them after each dip and slide them right on and you want to make your strands well you want to measure between here and here and that's how and take away an inch that's how long you want your inside strand to be and then you add six inches for your loops or even five inches um, to this measurement here so that way you can make your lo loops at each end and uh, that's basically all you do to use it Okay, thank you for watching, and if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe to my channel by hitting the red button below the video, and if you have any questions or comments, just go ahead and leave them below. You can get the full project sheet for this paper bead drying rack from the website, paperbeadcrafts.com. It'll be in the how-to section under the link that says rotating carousel paper bead drying rack. And uh, basically that's it. Thank you and have a great day.
Goodbye.